Have you ever started your TIG welding machine and found that the tungsten tries to disappear up into the torch? Well, mine just did. Hey, we're gonna show you in TIG welding about the top five most made mistakes in getting started. Even the experts have these same problems. In fact, I set this machine up and I was welding with a pointed tungsten and I was lighting an arc on stainless steel with a nice fine pointed tungsten. When I lit the arc, I noticed the tungsten started to disappear and it's now balled up on the end. So what causes that? Well, typically here's what happens. During the setup of a machine, all the ports in here look pretty much the same. If you take the TIG torch and you put it in reverse polarity, and most people don't know what that is, but if you actually get it in backwards, your ground and your torch or vice versa, this will happen. So I've got reverse polarity. And so in some machines, take a look real close. When you're setting your machine up or changing torches, there's actually a little cartoon there that shows your torch. Go ahead and plug that in first and then plug your ground in. Now this particular machine has a plus and a minus on it. And I accidentally took the TIG torch and I put it in minus. Okay, that's where I need to put the ground, always in minus first. Of course, the only available port now is the plus. So this machine will take care of it, and most machines will, if you put it in that order. So take a look at my tungsten, and I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna reverse the leads and show you that it does work. Okay, I went ahead and I reground my tungsten to a nice fine point. Uh, I reversed my lead, so now I'm in what we consider straight polarity. I'm gonna go ahead and test it, and make sure everything is working right. Okay, so, okay, I can see the puddle, nice pointed tungsten. So, everything's working right now. Okay, so it tests out fine. Again, it, it maintains the point. The arc started properly. Uh, I hear the gas flow. So, uh, number one, that was it. That was uh, make sure you get your leads correct so you don't have a polarity problem. Okay, number two, the most made mistakes in TIG welding is this. It has to do with torch angle. Okay, so when we're talking about TIG welding, you've seen it on other videos, what is the perfect torch angle? Well, we talk about it as being straight up and down, but the reality behind it is you can't see. So you're either tweaking your head over here trying to see the puddle, or you end up turning the angle on the torch. How much is too much? Well, I like to describe it this way. This is perfect. As you're welding along, you're gonna see the angle change slightly. It may be 15 degrees, and you get to 30 degrees, you get to 45 degrees. You know what, you're still getting gas coverage here at 45, but you know, one of these days, you're gonna hit the tipping point, and this is just about the tipping point. So when you start getting down at 60 degrees, the arc isn't as stable, you don't have a nice round puddle, the, the argon is deflecting. So just know that if you're at this far down, and, and don't ride your cup on your part. That's not uh, really how you ought to do that. Go ahead, get upright. And you know, you're gonna find out that later in the day, you're gonna find that angle changing. Just because you get fatigued, you don't realize that it's drooping. So let me show you what, uh, what I think the perfect angle is, and then I'm gonna droop it down here and show you what the results would be that way. Okay, I'm gonna start off welding somewhat straight up and down, not perfectly straight up and down, but you know, I can see the puddle, and I can see that it's pretty clean. I'm adding filler material. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the angle of the torch so severe that it's kind of hard to control. And I can still weld, but it just gets out of control. So you can see that I'm, I'm probably at 60 degrees as soon as I lost control, I started stopping. So uh, just know you got a nice stable arc, nice stable puddle, and as that angle changes, it may try to wander on you. So uh, you have to determine what works best for you. Now, I still got fairly good coverage even at this angle, but there is a point where it just absolutely loses coverage. So uh, that's tip number two, torch angle.
Okay, tip number three is actually the gas itself. What do we use most of the time in TIG welding? And I can tell you, I recommend almost always 100% argon. Now, as you start welding and, and learning how to weld, very, very common to start off that other welding process where you pull the trigger and the wire comes out. And guess what kind of gas you use on that? You use argon mixed with CO2. So, if you accidentally take that MIG setup and you take that bottle because it's got argon in it, why wouldn't it work? Well, it won't work because the CO2 portion of it, that's a volatile gas, it's an active gas. So when you start TIG welding with it, it's gonna do all kinds of crazy things. So we're gonna show you. I'm gonna go ahead and shift from argon gas to the, the MIG mix. Sometimes it's called C25, sometimes it's called 7525. And then 75 is argon mixed with 25% CO2. We do not wanna use it for TIG welding. So let me make the change and show you what happens. You, you can see there's a lot of sparklies in here. You know, it will cause a try to weld, but you can see that it, it flames up and it's just dirty. Look at all the sparks. That's, that's usually your telltale sign. So, ugly as can be. You can see I can make it weld. It's got 75% argon, so I can make it weld, but it's that 25% that destabilizes the arc and you can see all these little sparklers going everywhere. And the longer you go, you're gonna hit a, a, a pocket or something where there's a lot of sulfur in your metal and it's just gonna explode on you. So I'm gonna go ahead and change it back to straight argon just to show you exactly what happens as soon as you go back to the right gas. Okay, all I did was I changed gas. I went back from the C25 or that argon CO2 mix that we just did a little weld on now I'm back to 100% argon, and I'm just going to do a side-by-side -side weld so you can see the difference. Okay, so you can do a close-up here. You know, when I first lit the arc, I saw little sparklies, and that was just the, the gas that remained in the lines from the last weld. So it took about three or four seconds, it all cleaned out, and you can see the weld changes immediately. Okay, the number four most made mistake has to do with the argon gas itself, the CFH, cubic feet per hour. Now, we obviously like a lot of argon. This particular cup has a fairly small opening and my stick out is about a quarter of an inch. So it's gonna have an ideal uh, CFH setting of somewhere around 15 to 20 CFH. Now, here's a logic that happens an awful lot. If 15 or 20 is good, 40 is better, or is 60 better? The more argon, the better the gas coverage. Well, the reality behind it is you gotta be careful. It creates turbulence, so it starts sucking in oxygen and your weld suffers. So let's see what it's like to accidentally turn your gas up, or maybe you try it on purpose. So I've got this thing set at, uh, I don't know, 50 to 60 CFH. You know, I, actually, I don't have real good stability of the puddle. You can see it fluttering. Man, you can really hear it, too. It's 
it's, it's pretty amazing just changing the gas settings on here, how much difference you get. I, I don't have control of the puddle. When it's running at 60 CFH, you can hear it, it hisses, but it also throws so much gas on the puddle that it's bouncing around. And I can see porosity developing uh, within it. So even when I got to the end of the weld here, I, I could see this, um, this porosity forming, just not a good deal. So, you know, set it back to 15 to 20 CFH, and this is the results that you'll get out of it. Okay, now the, the fifth and final item that we're going to talk about, the most made mistakes in TIG welding, has to do with voltage. Now, there's some machines that will actually show you your voltage, but the reality behind it is you are the welding operator. You control the voltage by the distance of your tungsten to the parts you're about to weld. So here's what I'm recommending, just as a guideline. As you get your skills better and better and better, the distance needs to be about the distance of the offset of the thickness of a dime. Okay, now if you can do that, you're going to be probably in the 9 to 12 volt range. Now, the reason you want to get that close to your weld is because you got a little conical arc, and what takes me maybe uh, 50 amps to make a weld, if I raise the torch too high, then it requires more amperage, and then the arc gets wider, you lose control of the puddle. So that's why you'll find some people can weld very, very good with low distortion, and other people weld, but they have higher distortion. So I'm gonna demonstrate that. I'm gonna do the nine to 12 volts, and then watch me raise the arc. In order to keep the puddle, I've gotta increase amperage. So here goes. Okay, start the arc. All I want to do is just get a nice little puddle that I can see. If you notice, my tungsten is really close to the puddle. And I just dwell there a little bit. You know, so I'll, uh, I'll watch it. And I'm not adding filler, so you'll see all kinds of rust and stuff come out. But just a good, steady travel speed. Now, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to lift the the torch up much higher and I can see better but I've got to increase my amperage just so I can make that puddle halfway stable. So you can see I can put twice three times the amount of heat in as I need to by being this far away. So not a good thing but you know in the beginning it's okay as you get better and better go ahead and drop it down get down closer, 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 closer. And when you can do that, you'll have a very stable puddle. Okay, so what you could see here was a very stable puddle at about nine to 12 volts, very well controlled. Now I'm welding on steel, so it's not the cleanest thing, but I, I welded about an inch at nine to 12 volts and then I raised my torch. Not only did I lose stability, uh, I started getting porosity in my weld. So just know that the further away you get, uh, the more concern about porosity in your weld. So then what I did was I went ahead and dropped my torch back down to nine to 12 volts and you could see that it cleaned up very nicely. So anyway, those are the uh, the top five things that I run into a lot. And that, that mostly comes from you in the forums and, and just general phone calls. So we'll keep, we'll keep doing top five. We're gonna get into some other metals and, and talk about the most made mistakes as well. So thank you for watching TIG Time. I'm Mr. TIG. To stay up with the latest TIG welding technology and education, subscribe by clicking the button below.